Hi, Oregon Bee Atlas volunteers and uh, greater community. My name is Adoni Melithopoulos. I am the Pollinator Health Extension Specialist for the state of Oregon. I'm an assistant professor here at Oregon State University. And today I'm going to cover a little topic which is of great importance. It's what you do before you get your labels. This is a little bit of a change for Atlas people who were involved last year and also a little bit of a change from what we gave you in the trainings. This is the new and improved and hopefully easier way to do things. Uh, and what it involves is after you upload your data, we're going to go through a step of checking your records before we print your labels. I'm going to talk about that today. So just a quick review. Okay, so you're at this point right now. Uh, if you started this year, you went out and got some records. And uh, the way, remember, just a reminder, you know, you would have uh, caught them in a killing jar like this. Maybe you were on willows and you caught them in a killing jar like this. You gave each sample a sample ID for any specific date. Um, there is a specific sample ID, which is either a set of host plants in one area. So let's say you were in, you know, a, um, a little park and you were uh, collecting on willows. All the willow bees would go into the same jar and it would get the number one. And then when you went to another location and sampled on willows, you'd call it number two. Or if you were in the same location, you started collecting off of Oregon grape. You'd call that number two and so on and so forth. Um, the next thing is the date. The GPS, we put this on these little sticky labels. Uh, many of you will have gotten these sticky labels from your team leaders. They're these little Avery labels. And you write on there, one, the date, GPS to three decimal points. Uh, and then the site name, which is just a, a name that makes sense to you of where you were. And then you'd write on the jar which, uh, which plant you were sampling off of. Okay, so you already got these records. I see many of you have collected many bees already, including Max here. And this is Max's jar. You see what he's done? Here he's taken the label off his killing jars, that Avery label. He's peeled it off. And on March 17th, uh, he caught two, three bees. Three bees. And there you see uh, what he did, 19, the... Roman numeral for March 17.1. So with that sample ID number one, and then he has the GPS coordinates. And Max, you've got, you, you don't need to put so many decimal places. You can just go to three decimal places. He's got a uh, location name and the plant. Perfect job, perfect job. And then he went out here. Oh, here's another one. Here on April 19th, he collected off dandelions. He got this beautiful, looks like an adrenid, and he's put the information there. And then he moved over uh, to, I can't quite make that out, in shed, I guess in his shed, another location, and he put, he got this, it looks like some kind of osmia. So here it says 19420.1, and here it says 194, the Roman numeral for April uh, 20, the day, dot two. Perfect. These are great. These are awesome. And you can see he had a great day here on the 19th. He had all of these bees he caught. Uh, he got, uh, and he didn't get them off a plant, but he got them off a location. He said there was uh, digger bees that were in an area, and he can see he's got uh, lots of females, perhaps some males. And here you can see Nomada, the cuckoo parasites. Good job, Max. Anyways, you're all at this stage, maybe not as far along as Max has gotten, but you've gotten a bunch of bees and you've got a label with a bunch of bees next to them. And you can't really do anything at this point until you get a location label under these bees. So what we're trying to do, your next step is you want to get a location label under the bees. And then what you can do is you can resort the bees according to the ones that look similar and then from there, you can start to work through keys and all that. But you can't move these bees until you get a label on each one of the bees. So you're stuck. And so um, the first step to doing that, and many of you have done this already, is you submit your data. And we've got two ways of doing this. You remember this from an uh, earlier webinar. Either take a picture of your notebook. And, it, and this is an old notebook. Uh, our notebooks this year are a little bit different. And you fill them out. You don't even need to have the notebook per se. You can use a piece of paper and just make sure you have all the data on that that we require from the training. And then you 
Take a picture of it and email it to Cody, our labels are, at OregonBeeAtlas at gmail.com. At that point, you're done. You don't have to enter data into iNaturalist or a spreadsheet. You don't have to do anything after that. All you do is take a picture of your notebook with all the relevant data, and then you email it to us, and we're, re- we're fine. We're good. Anyways, again, this is not the same. Don't get hung up with this sheet. I just want to get across. You're going to take a picture of your notebook with all the information as we uh, required it from the training and you're going to email it and then Cody's going to put it in a spreadsheet automatically. You're done. You're done. Alternatively, many of you use iNaturalist and we have this great, um, and and iNaturalist, for those of you who are new to it, uh, we take a picture of the host plant and and you can see here when you, when you save your um, host plant pictures in the Oregon Bee Atlas regional team project, you can put your sample ID, uh, ID and all the information that you require. Uh, and that gets automatic. Once you get it in your phone, you don't have to do anything more other than um, uh, you don't need to actually do anything more at that point because we have a p- computer program that automatically takes the output from my naturalist using this thing called a Python script. So this little robot here, it's a bunch of code, takes all the data and it puts it in a spreadsheet. Okay. So we're getting real close. So you want these labels, and these are the new labels. We'll have a specific webinar talking about the new labels. But you want these new labels, and how do you get them? Well, the, what's next? This is what this webinar is about, is you got to check your data over. So we're going to be either if you took a picture of your notebook or you enter things into iNaturalist, we're going to compile all that information into one database, online database. Um, it's Here it's called 2019 Oregon Bee Atlas Database. It's the year two database. And in here, when it gets to this point, you can go through and check your data over a week before we print the labels. So by we're going to do all the work to get everything in here. And right now we'll, we've already updated it to the, the present date. And all you need to do is go in and verify the records, and we'll take it from there. Here's the process. So uh, starting next Friday, May the 10th, and then every week thereafter, Cody is going to update the spreadsheet. He's going to take that spreadsheet online, and he's going to upload new records. You uh, You then have an opportunity to check over your records. Now, if you check over your records by the following Friday, OSU will print those labels and they'll mail them to you. Now, you'll see on the next slide, we won't, if you only have a couple of labels, we probably won't mail them to you immediately. If you have over 50 records collected in the last sampling period, then we'll, we'll definitely be sending in the mail um, these labels directly to you. So let's just go over these exceptions. If you don't verify your records, like if you never go on and verify your records, and we really encourage you at least to try and verify them by these specific cutoff dates I'm going to talk about, or if you have less than 50 labels, regardless of, you know, if you're in those two situations, regardless of whether you verified anything or not, we're going to print the labels off on these three dates. They sort of coincide with your group activities so that when you get to your group activities, your leaders can hand over your labels. Now, I would really encourage you, if you're only, you're not, you know, you're in your first year, you're still getting a hang of it, and you're not collecting like max all these bees, and you don't have that many bees, I would say by the 14th of June, you should check over the spreadsheet once. And by the 26th of July, go through and check it over once. Uh, By doing that, we can ensure that the records are, Good. And the reason we're doing this, the reason we're doing this is because last year we went through this whole process of having to send labels back and they were incorrect and it took up a lot of time. If we can get this working, if you can check over your data before we print it, it'll save us a lot of time and the Atlas will grow and we'll be famous and everything will go well. Okay. So I want to, I want to end not really end. It's going to take about 10 more minutes. So um, sit back, pour yourself a drink. Uh, the rest of this is going to be so much fun. I just take my jacket off. Okay. 
Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a real life demo. Okay. Uh, here we are at the Oregon State page. You don't need to do that. What you're going to do is you're going to type, go to the Oregon B Project website, OregonBProject.org. Now, from this website, if you don't know, you can scroll down and it has the Oregon B Atlas. And there's the Oregon B Atlas page, which doesn't have a lot on it. But what it does have is this magic link in the middle. When you hit this link, link to the volunteer site, you're going to come to this point where you have to enter a password. Now, this uh, video is going to be available to the public, so I'm not going to give the password away. If you're in the Atlas, you know the secret handshake. I've entered it in here, and when I hit the button, it takes me to the Atlas website, the real website with all the stuff. And just a quick, you know, if you haven't been here before, uh, the roundups, the, the not really weekly, but these regular uh, roundup uh, posts, these blog posts are there. So if I hit it, see there, oops, one more password. And there they all are, videos and all the stuff we have there, training videos. We also have specific training videos. We have the manual uh, from last year. So the 2019 training manual is there. We've got videos, um, some other resources. The webinars are hosted here. Um, other outreach resources. So here we've got things like PowerPoints. And I would really encourage you, what is the Oregon Bee Atlas? Um, um, different things that we do, talk for gardeners. You can download these as PowerPoints by pressing the button and then use them when you're giving talks to the public. We're going to really try and pump this up this year. You guys are really knowledgeable about bees. You should be out talking to people. So we'll be um, talk about this in a future webinar, but I just wanted to tell you it was there. And then at the bottom, we've got taxonomic keys. So there's a bunch of keys here to species and genera. But most importantly for today, we have databases and data sheets. Let's click it. And another password protection. And here we got it. So two things I want to show you. The one is data sheets for your collection events. So if you want those, uh, I think right here. Uh, there they are. See, there's the data sheets. Those are the ones that we use for this year. All right that down, close, current chat, close all tabs. Okay, so that's there. You can download few other ones. But here we've got two things. This is a 2018 master database. In about a month, we're going to update it completely. Don't go there for about a month. I should just say that. I put it on the text there. But don't go there for about a month. In about a month, we're going to have it all updated from last year. So all your bees are going to have some kind of name that Link has put on them. So um, oftentimes, it's a species name. Sometimes it's a genera name. But that's going to be on there in about a month. But the 2019 master database is what we're concerned about today. So just rolling things back. So you've got your bees collected. You've already entered your data. And on Fridays, Cody's going to go through iNaturalist. The robot's going to pull the records. And he's going to take any pictures that you've sent him. And he's going to put it in here. Oops. I did this webinar. I did a test. Close your eyes, everybody. Just hold a sec. There we go. I kind of um, did one version of this webinar and didn't go well. So this is my take two, which is going way better. Okay, here we go. So this is what happened. So uh, Cody's gone in. He's populated this up. And he, he's he got a first... There's some fields here. So let me give you color coding. Green is just like... Uh, gives you information on the status of your record. Gray uh, fields are things I don't want you touching, so please don't enter anything in those. Don't touch them at all. Uh, uh, there's a gray. And the white fields are things that you can play around with. And, and then we're going to talk a little bit at the end about the yellow, um, the yellow fields, which uh, we'll talk briefly about, but we're, we're going to really reserve that for another webinar. Okay, so here we go. The first thing you'll notice is the date these records were added on. So this was today, the 3rd of May. Uh, Cody has added in all these records. 1,500 records have been added. And not all of those were collected. Some of them were from the trap nests. But we've got 1,500 records. Woohoo! Good job, everybody. A good first month of the Atlas. Okay. So you can see here when stuff has been added in. And so next week, the 10th of May, there'll be a whole bunch of new records that say 
10th of May and then the 17th of May. So we're going to be keeping adding records. It's just going to keep uh, adding on, adding on, adding on. Now, the data here is sorted by the date added, but then it's sorted by the collector and then the date that the samples were collected. So Jerry Paul comes up and you see Amy Grotta and there's uh, Brianna. So you see they're kind of sorted by your collector and they're actually not alphabetically sorted. They're sorted by these iNaturalist ID numbers. I'll tell you about that in a second. So there's Jerry's, that's what Jerry has collected this year. Now, let's go through some of these fields and show you what I want corrected. So the first thing is the iNaturalist collector ID, which we grab from iNaturalist. And the thing that I want you to check for here, we're going to link this. We had a survey that went out a couple months ago trying to link people's iNaturalist names up with their names. And here you can see, here's the iNaturalist ID. And in some cases, you see uh, uh, Amy, Brianna, and Jerry have done a great job. They let us know what their iNaturalist. But here we got a few people who haven't indicated to us what their, see, we don't have names uh, associated with these iNaturalist IDs. So we're going to send that um, survey out uh, shortly. If while going through this, you can figure out, oh, yeah, that was, you know, this is, I don't know what, what my number is, but I know I was the guy in Benton County uh, collecting here who got, you know, six Bs. That's me. Then you can just go in and put your name in. That'd be great. And then we can figure it out. Okay. But let's, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to the very beginning. Here we got Jerry. And so what Jerry's going to do is going to say, okay, this is good. This was the data collected. And he'll go, oh, wait a second. The time. The time here. So let, if you go across the fields, it's like your iNaturalist ID number, which you may not know, iNaturalist generates them, your name, your initial, your last name, the date the B was collected, the day, the month, which is in Roman numerals, so March is three, third month, uh, 2019, and then there's the time the B was collected, and notice here, I already see something that's a little off. According to this, Jerry collected these bees almost at 9 p.m. in March, which is impossible. It's way too cold and it would have been dark out. And so what I think has happened here is that Jerry um, went through and he went in the evening into iNaturalist and entered these things in manually or something like that happened. Anyways, the time is off. So what I would prefer in a situation like this where you're thinking that, like, here's one at uh, Jerry. It's like after midnight. He's that's a hard-working Atlas volunteer. So um, here with these things, I would just delete all of these numbers. If, they, if you have a sense that these were not the times that you collected the bees, delete them. Okay? So you go in, you delete these out, and um, you go over to the next column. Collection day two, month two, and year two. Now, these are for pan traps. So I suspect that Jerry put some kind of trap out here on the... Uh, uh, this seems a little weird, Jerry. This one seems a little bit better. So the 26th, he put something out and then picked it up again. And let's go over to trap net. I don't quite know what... So Jerry, there's something going on here. So if you have a date here, that means that you put a trap out. And the fact that there's two dates here means there's something wonky. And since if it was in fact collected with a net, I would delete these second dates. You don't need these. The only time you need them, let's, I think we have some people who have maybe put some traps out. I'm just going to go down here. Linda, I know, has been doing some traps. And pan trap. So she did put a pan trap out here, so that makes sense. And she, um, but here, clearly, no pan trap uh, was there. It says net, or maybe it's a mistake. Anyways, these things need to be caught. These kinds of errors. Let's just keep going across. So time to the sample ID. Okay, so the sample ID is very important. 
And so it will, um, we need these filled out. And so I'm just looking at some of these. Let's just, okay, let's go up to Jerry and see he's got this great numbering system. So here's on this date on March, March 29th, he has sample 71 and he caught one, two, three, four, five bees on this. And let's go look over. If you go over, he'll probably have the plant host on, uh, what you might call it, um, Oregon grape. Okay. Fantastic, Jerry. Good job. Okay. So these look, so he's got samples. He's got a sample ID, but here we can see, I'm not sure who this is. Jerry. So Jerry, you've got some things here with no sample ID. So you're going to need to go in and clean these up. You're going to need to sort of figure out what, uh, you know, the, uh, which was that sample ID for that date and correct them on here. Okay. So we got Corvallis, ben Benton County. And so I'm looking uh, down here. And I noticed there's a couple, there's somebody up here collecting in Los Angeles. So whoever this person is, I don't think they're in the Atlas. So we'll call those out. That doesn't happen that often. Okay. So I'm just looking at Jerry's uh, collections here. And the, this one here is missing a sample ID. That's one thing. But if we keep going across, the one thing, the other thing that I notice with it is he's got Benton, but no location. So off, this will happen often. Let's just, if we scroll down here, we'll see here's another one that says Multnomah. It doesn't have a city. And here's one that says Yam Hill, but it doesn't have a city. And so what I want to suggest here, location is going to take the form of closest city. If you're in a place that, you know, you're sort of catching common bees, you're sort of by the side of the road. So if I was like a few miles out of Corvallis in the ditch, I would write under location, it should be Corvallis. And if it's not captured, it's because iNaturalist had a hard time figuring it out. In which case you need to go in and say, um, Yamhill, let's say McMinnville. Now, the only exception to this is if you're in a place that's really quite unique, you're in some kind of area that you really want us to know about. It was not, um, you know, a really interesting plant community or catching some interesting bees. And it's not, McMinnville would really be deceptive. In that case, what you're going to do under location, you're going to write things out like we taught you in the class. So you're going to start with, we already know it's Marion County, so you may say, you know, um, some mountain, uh, highway, uh, road, uh, forest road, 97, uh, three miles southwest of a uh, trailhead or something. So you'll write it all out. Southwest will be felt, spelt out completely. Miles will be spelt out completely. If you're in a weird place like that, write everything out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pr provide the final kind of thing that goes on the label based on what you have. Well, let's go over that again because that might have been a little complicated. So for location, most times iNaturalist will guess and we've programmed iNaturalist to kind of, if it's in Corvallis in a certain street, it's going to strip out all the street names. It's going to put Corvallis. And um, it, if it's blank, then we want you to go in and sort of put a description there. Keep the description simple, like a city, a close by city, something you're on the outskirts of, unless it's you're in a really great natural area, in which case we want you to write the location out like we showed you in the training and write it out completely with no abbreviations. I hope that's clear. Okay, moving along. So I'm looking at the GPS and they all look good. Looking up and down. GPSs look good. GPSs look generally good. Okay. The next thing I want you to look at is this lat long accuracy. This is a new thing we're implementing this year. It, it's only for iNaturalist. So if you're taking photographs of your sheet, this won't apply. But in iNaturalist, it tells us how accurate the reading was. And so a lot of these are really great. Five, you know, 50 is maybe a little high, but it's probably acceptable. But if you look at these readings here, just go down a little bit, 
this says the readings are accurate within a kilometer and a half. That's not really great. And so what we want you to do is to check these out. Now, the easy way to check these out, I'm just going to scroll over, is here. So we're skipping over some sections. But at the very end, if you collected a naturalist, we have, um, we have uh, put the URL for the observation. So this one here that's a kilometer and a half within the location, what you can do is go into iNaturalist. So all I did is I hit that link there. So I hovered my mouse and this thing popped up above. I hit that thing above. And look, it took me to, uh, this is one of Brianna's um, uh, observations. And here you can see she can make an adjustment uh, uh, on the fly. So she can go down and I'm going to just, here's the observation. It was here at uh, Minto Brown Island Park. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, I think I can go here. Overlay. I'm going to turn it to satellite. See that? Now I can really see where I was. She's like, oh yeah, I wasn't quite there. I was really over here. And so what you can do here, I can't do it do it because it's your record but after you log in you can edit it and you can drag this over to the spot where it actually was and then that will update and give you a new gps coordinate and that gps coordinate so here we're going to details you can just you know copy and paste this gps coordinate and bring it over so this was not the one so the one that was way off i think was this this, this one here so let's bring that up. And if we go details, see it says 1.5 kilometer accuracy. That's not good. And so we here again, we'll just go into the map. And maybe, it, you know, it, it says it, it's not, it doesn't know if it's really accurate, but it might be, oh, that, that was pretty much the place I was. You're good. But if you want to go change it again, you when you log in on the website, you can go in, you can make the change. Uh, you just allow you to drag your pin and drop it. You'll get new GPS coordinates. And then what we want you to do is come back over here and you can do two things. If you're cool, just go through and correct them. Just go in and type the numbers in or copy and paste. So if you go here and show, oops, details, you can go like that and then copy and just pick it up and then paste it in. Uh, and here you go here and you could go, uh, these are all left clicks. I can go paste. Okay. So you can go in there and clean those up. And then here at lat long, you can just say uh, checked. So you can go in here and type. Or no, let's say you, you'll write verified. Sorry. Okay. So we now know that's a really accurate uh it's a really accurate GPS. I'm just going to undo that for now. Okay. So that's checking the GPS. The last thing is uh, for people who are doing iNaturalist, we have a new thing, a new computer program that takes the GPS coordinates and it calculates the elevation. So you don't have to look up the elevation. So this is done automatically. We'll run the script again after everything is corrected. So don't you have to worry about it. In fact, I'm going to take this here and gray it out like that. Don't touch that. Collection method, of course, uh, if it wasn't a net and it was a pan trap, you need to make sure of that. Make sure you didn't make an error when you were typing things in an iNaturalist. And then we've got the plant families and species. Um, so uh, this is in iNaturalist sort of done automatically. We do have the pictures for people who are doing things in iNaturalist. So we might go back uh, later and get uh, one of our good botanists in the atlas to go through and check some of these, particularly if they're in very cool areas. Okay, that's that. So how do you make a correction? I think all the corrections I would just directly make in here. And once you do it, what you're gonna do is you're gonna type in V, verified. And like, you might go through all your records. Let's say, let's say I'm Brianna and I go through and I say, this one's verified. I went through and I corrected everything. What you'll do then is you can just take this, you see this little square, you see a little square here? You can just uh, left click it and it'll just copy down the V's. Okay. So you can go through and correct everything here. You can go through and correct your, the times. I don't think these were collected at, you know, and, uh, 
at um, almost 1130. Um, something funky going on here because everybody's there at 1130. I don't know what's going on. Maybe uh, let me check on this. We'll get back to everybody on that because I have a feeling that maybe maybe iNaturalist uses a specific. I'm going to just look at one. Well, I'll do this at the end. So anyways, so you're going to go through and check everything and make your changes directly. If it's a time that's wrong, delete it and so on and so forth and make your changes directly and then put the letter V and then we know it's been changed. The only thing that's a little bit cumbersome and for people who don't have experience uh, with spreadsheets, this might be confusing is something like this. So let's say you put everything in iNaturalist and here we have um, some of Jerry's things. He's got seven Bs, but there was actually 10 Bs. There were 10 Bs. So you've got a couple options. If you're comfortable with spreadsheets, you can go in and you can insert 10 lines. So uh, insert, uh, I highlight that, I go insert below and you can do all that and add the lines, copy and paste all the records down and just you know add a few more records to get you up to your number. If you're not comfortable with that, that's totally cool. So let's say Jerry's seven, here's his seven. Let's say we verified them, here they are. And let's say, but let's say there's, um, just a second, I'll put this, no, I can do this like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and what I'm gonna do at the top here is I'm gonna put a little comment. Like, let's say you just don't like spreadsheets, you don't know how to insert rows and it just freaks you out. Don't worry a bit. What we'll do is we'll go on the top here and I'm gonna left click this. We'll scroll down here to comment and I'll just put a comment and say, there were 10, not seven Bs. Okay. And so Cody will come back the following week. He'll see this and he'll check it. He'll add a couple more Bs in that row. He'll do that for you. Okay. So you can go through and just make, let's just reiterate that you go through and make simple changes. You can just change the value uh, on these things as you go along. Oops. Uh, you can change, here we go, delete. So you can change, you can go ahead and change directly on the sheet and just put the letter V where you've, you know, you've checked everything. You know, some cases there's no problem. You just put a V, but as you go through and you check things and you change things to put the letter V, but if you get to this, you're kind of freaked out with the idea of adding extra rows because in fact, you know, um, here we've got a big string of somebody caught, holy moly, 27 Bs, but actually we're 32. You can go in and just, uh, after you verify, just leave a comment and just reminding you how to do that. You'll just go back here. You put the letter V and all the records in there and that's, in that string, let's say there's like this many, and then you'll right click, it brings up this menu. You'll go to comment and you'll say, there was, you know, 37 Bs, not 27. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Last thing I wanted to show you uh, before I check something, I'm just gonna uh, put in the show notes whether the, the, there's a, not show notes, that's the wrong thing. I'm gonna go into the uh, blog comments and just make sure if the time is just off uh, for some funny reason, I'm just gonna go, um, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the blog. I'll say, oh, don't change the time. We've got that worked out. But the last thing I was gonna mention is here under family, genus, species, and cast. So when you have your, finally get your labels on your bees and you kind of resort them, one thing you may start to do in July and August is start to try and identify your bees to family, genus, species, and figure out if it's a male or female. In these yellow columns, you can add in what you think the things are. Uh, what each of these, if you think, oh, this bee is clearly a megachylidae, it's a megachile, it's megachile rotundata, and it's a male, you can put that all in here. And then what's going to happen in... Uh, in the winter is when Link comes back, he's going to go through your bees and he'll do it line by line. He'll lay the genus, the species, and then you can compare your, your determinations to Link's, which you will be able to do to a certain extent this year, but this will really make things a lot better for next year. 
one last thing on that note. We have these two new columns here, observation number and voucher number. I'm just going to bring up our, oh, I know, not there. Forget. Bartender is the software we use for making the labels. But if we go back to here, um, you'll see there's a big number on here, OA1900020. That's the number we're going to put on here when we print the label and it comes back to you. So we'll have that number. It's going to correspond with a big number on a label. It's a lot more visible than any of the other numbers on there. And so that's what that number is. You're still going to um, figure things out. I'll just tip the, um, just the, uh, tip the cards here. So your sample, the way that these new labels are going to work, here's your date. There's your sample ID. And this is specimen number five. So ID three, five, let's say a 10 B, you'd have one that goes three, five, three, six, three, seven, three, eight, three, nine, three, ten. And after that point, we're going to just refer to this number. They're both going to be uh, for three, six, this is going to be nine, zero, 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 two, one. But uh, at that point, we're going to just rely on this number for everything we do afterwards. It'll be a lot easier. The number's bigger, it's more clear, and it also associates with this barcode. I think I got a little bit into the weeds. After, in the once I'm done the webinar, there's going to be an email address where you can email me your questions. I will address them on the blog. Hopefully, this is fairly clear, as clear as can be. But we will go over it again. And also, you can always email me if there's something that isn't clear and you want a specific training on. Hope this has been helpful. You guys are doing an amazing job. I'm always impressed with all the great work that you do. You humble me. I'm so honored to be working with you all. And uh, hopefully I can make uh, turn that honor into a lot less work for you, my goal in life. Okay, take care, everybody. Good luck out there. Mm -hmm.